uh, I was able to uh, say to President Yeltsin that we don't envisage a dramatic and sudden, remarkable expansion of NATO, that this is a progressive, evolutionary expansion. In the shadow of the Kremlin, distinguished national heroes and war veterans, like General Beregovoy, the cosmonaut, and Mikhail Kalashnikov, inventor of the Kalashnikov submachine gun, weapon of war for governments and guerrillas alike. Fifty years on, this was not just a day for Russia to commemorate the Soviet defeat of Hitler. It was also a day of political anxiety, the rewriting of history and some bitterness. Boris Yeltsin atop Lenin's mausoleum, the name subtly covered up by greenery. Many feet below him, other world leaders, including John Major and Bill Clinton. Conspicuous by their absence, President Mitterrand and Chancellor Kohl, choosing to arrive later. With this classic militaristic tone, those two absences reflect deep Western disquiet, not only at the continued Russian brutality in Chechnya, but also that Boris Yeltsin has exploited this commemoration of the Red Army's defeat of Nazism as a cynical exercise to be seen wielding power and influence on the world stage. But while these uniforms and medals paraded, large numbers of Russian veterans feel bitter and forgotten. Alone in his one-room apartment that took 40 years to get after war service, 78-year-old Yevgeny Kaldi watched the commemoration on television. Around him, mementos of his time as a war photographer. Prominent, his own photo of the Russian flag, a red tablecloth, being hoisted on the Reichstag in Berlin, arguably the most memorable of World War II. He had saved this vodka to celebrate, but some of his views on Boris Yeltsin are too rude to broadcast. Today he lives on a pension of 13 pounds a month. The state gave him one free meal and a box of stock cubes to celebrate VE Day. They said, after you take Berlin, that's it. All of you will become kings and everyone will be provided with everything. And just as they started to cheat us in 45, so they still cheat us now. Yevgeny Kaldi represents an undercurrent of resentment. Billions of rubles poured into this giant prestige obelisk. And today the military-industrial complex being honored, not just with the kind of Soviet-style military parade abandoned in 1990. Defense Minister Grachov made a public pledge to modernize and strengthen Russia's armed forces because of continued regional armed conflicts like Chechnya. Moscow shook once again to the rumble of tanks, a display of armor and power that Western leaders, including John Major, refused to attend, not least because it included units just back from Chechnya. In ceremony, there was goodwill with coded warnings. Britain is looking for a complete system of partnerships in which partnership with Russia must be a central component. In private in the Kremlin, an exchange of gifts before the diplomatic gloves came off. John Major expressing deep concern to the Russian president about Chechnya. Boris Yeltsin then raising yet again Russia's fear of an enlarged NATO right up to Russia's border. The Russians are self-evidently worried about that. Uh, I was able to uh, say to President Yeltsin that we don't envisage a dramatic and sudden remarkable expansion of NATO, that this is a progressive evolutionary expansion. The overall impression has been commemoration, but unlike the ceremonies in London, Paris and Berlin, this day has carried a range of political undertones, some possibly ominous, which may yet mean this is remembered as more than just Russia's VE Day. Nick Gowing, Channel 4 News, Moscow.